Hello, I am Susanna Ardigo, and this is Visualizing Evolving Software and Data Cities with Metricity. This work is in collaboration with Chaba Nagy, Roberto Minelli, and Michele Lanza. Enjoy! During the lifetime of a system, many developers work on it, on different parts that interact with each other. What are they doing when they work? Developers spend considerably more time reading and understanding the existing code rather than writing new code. Thus, program comprehension is a fundamental activity for software maintenance and evolution. Software visualization is a popular technique to perform program comprehension. The city metaphor for visualizing software systems in 3D has been widely explored and it has led to many diverse implementations and approaches. 15 years ago, Wetter and Lanza presented Code City. This tool creates the best optimal city for a snapshot by mapping packages to districts and classes to buildings. Color in packages is used to show the nested level. Few approaches use the city metaphor to visualize database. Eight years ago, Maurice and Cliff presented Dahlia. This tool maps the creation time to districts and tables to buildings, with matrix mapped onto the base and height. Color is used to show the age and liveness of each object. Only a few approaches considered presenting the databases together with the source code. Dahlia 2, presented six years ago, visualizes the two cities of a database and its software system side by side. By selecting a source code building, the tool highlights in Cyan the tables that the file accesses and shows the list in a side panel. Two years ago, Marnescu presented for Enterprise System a meta-model containing object-oriented entities, relational entities, and object-relational interactions, stating that to perform reverse engineering on enterprise software systems, we need a specific meta-model which contains entities from the object-oriented part and entities regarding the relational part and the interactions between the two paradigms. The techniques previously mentioned focus on visualizing either the source code of software systems or the schema of databases, but they do not consider both simultaneously. In addition, repositories contain data stored in files, making modifications easy for developers. This is not shown in current approaches. We propose a novel approach to visualize a software system with its database and its interaction in the same city, called Metricity. Our model resembles real systems. We have a repository that contains packages. Class is a single file containing source code. A data file is an entity representing a file that contains data. Markup languages, such as XML, are used to define and store data in a semi-structured ways. Some programming languages provide a format to store objects, for example, JSON for JavaScript. Binary represents a file that does not contain source code or data. It holds information, but it is not repository related. Thus, it is considered as a series of bytes. A database is an entity representing an organized collection of data. It can be of different types depending on the technology used. We decided to use the relational database model. A table represents a collection of data. In a relational database, a table is composed of columns and rows. But in most NoSQL databases, represents data that is not necessarily structured. Table access describes when a class accesses a table. Formally, it is an association that links the two entities. It can represent different statements such as creation, retrieval, update, and deletion. A database is usually not versioned within software repositories. We use SQL Inspect, a statical analyzer that, given the source code of a repository, finds the location of queries and infers the schema. We define a set of metrics for each entity type in the model. From classes, we can extract known metrics, which are instance variables, for loops, number of methods, and lines of code. 
Data files can store information in various formats. We define matrix that describes standard formats comprehensively. We extracted number of entities, number of entity types, maximum number of properties per entity, maximum nesting level. Binary files contain unstructured information. We define one metric to describe them. Size, displayed in different formats. Regarding tables, we do not have data stored. We extract number of columns and table accesses. We have the model, the metrics, and the mapping. Finally, we can introduce the representation. Code buildings are blue cuboids. This comes from Code City. Data in software are different, and the representation needs to show this. We introduce a new basic shape, a circle. We created the data file cylinder. Also, the color has to be different, which is orange, which has no shared component with blue. The cylinder have different height and width, as classes do. Next, we have binaries. They don't hold important information, but they have to be different. We created the binary hemisphere of gray color. These entities are present in the repository. They were previously rendered as cold buildings or filtered. We feature an inferred database, but how to represent it? Conceptually, they are similar to data files, but they are different. We created the table cylinder of red color to make them easily distinguished. This entity type is inferred. For this, we gave them a ghosty look, making them slightly see-through. We present a novel way to add databases to the visualization. This is a new look of our city. Something is missing, the database. It is not physically present in the versioning system, thus it would be inconsistent to visualize it with the repository. We add the database to the visualization in one remaining space left unused. The sky, creating city with clouds. The two components face each other and grow toward the other. The space between them allows for a direct mapping of the table accesses. Let's take a closer look. The shapes and colors of meshes help to easily distinguish the entities and understand their role in the system. This repository is filled with data files and binaries. The database contains a few tables, which can be accessed by more than one class. The second visualization places the database below the surface, creating the city with underground. The mapping is not as direct. The classes that access tables have a see-through basement below the city, which is connected to the database. The implementation is divided into backend and frontend. The frontend is written in TypeScript, using the Vue.js framework. The canvas is created using Babylon.js. The frontend contacts the backend through HTTP requests, and WebSockets are used to exchange information. The backend is written in Java and built using Spring Boot. It uses MongoDB as a database for permanent storage. The analysis of a repository starts with the user input of a URL and, as an optional parameter, the database type. The front-end contacts the back-end through public REST API endpoints and initiates the download of the Git repository. The commits are analyzed in chronological order and then the histories of each entity are created. In the end, the project is stored into the database. The core of the analysis happens in Commit Analyzer. It is composed of two parts, File Analyzer and Database Constructor. The user starts the visualization by selecting a repository from the list. The front-end contacts the back-end through WebSockets and initiates the retrieval of the project from the database. The construction of the layout starts with analysis of the histories. For each version, we identify the highest value of the metrics for the base. We use this information to position the entities in a location that is reserved during the whole simulation. Last, 
the representation of the city is created with the creation of meshes information, which are then sent to the front end. The front end creates the canvas, renders the entity into Babylon JS meshes, and the city appears. Now I'll show you a demo. This is the home page of Metricity. The logo is in the center of the page, followed by two parts. The form is composed of a search bar to insert the URL of an existing public Git repository. The user can choose, as an advanced setting, the database type and dialect for the analysis. Our platform has the following types, Apache Impala, MongoDB, MySQL, SQLite, as well as no databases. With the inputs filled with valid information, the request to start the analysis can be confirmed and sent to the backend. The second part is a table of repositories. The columns show the name of the project, the owner and database type. The top rows show the projects ready to be visualized, while the bottom rows are projects currently being analyzed that cannot be visualized yet. For example, the one that we just inputted. Let's now choose one from the list, for example, Money Wallet. This is the main page of Metricity, the city visualization. At the center, we see the software city with folders and files represented as buildings and nested districts. Above the city, the sky is used to visualize the inferred databases and their tables, where connecting lines represent the accesses performed from the source code. The corners show information about the repository and the commit currently displayed. On the top, there is repository-related information. The left side shows the name and owner of the project. The right side shows the number of versions of the city and how many histories exist of each entity type. On the bottom, there is commit-related information. The left side shows the timestamp and author of the current commit, while the right side displays the message. Below, a timeline provides a global overview of the system evolution with additional details about the commits as well as instantaneous access to a specific place in the commit history. To facilitate moving through time, Metricity provides a control panel to easily move forward, backward, between different commits, as well as increasing and decreasing the speed of the execution, playing and pausing. Above, there is the number of the current version being displayed and the speed of the simulation. Finally, let's use the tool. We can start by going forward by a few versions. Let's increase the speed up to eight times we can enjoy the evolution of the city. Let's pause and continue with the description of the tool. The visualization is fully customizable inside the setting panel. On the left, there are general settings of the parts to display, the names pop up, and extra options to color the entity based on their name. On the right, the artifact settings allow full customization of the city itself. The visualization of entity type can be customized by selecting the metrics to use. Advanced customization can be achieved by changing the minimum size of both the base and the height, as well as the value of the multiplier used to give the entity their personalized weight in the city. The location of the database can be changed at the bottom, including the possibility to hide it.
the user can zoom in and out in the city, which can also be rotated with a simple click. Hovering an entity shows its name. By clicking, a panel with information appears. Statistics about the metrics are shown. A link to the public repository with the file and the timeline highlights the commit in which the entity has been changed. The point of view of the city can be modified with a double click. Here, for example, we are located here. We can zoom in. We can see the buildings from close. Feels like being part of the city. Here we see an example of yellow arcs which are used to show when an entity has been relocated in the current comet. We illustrate how metricity can be used to comprehend the evolution of a system by using the GNUcache Android Companion app of the GNUcache Accounting Program as an example. GNUcache Android allows recording transactions on the go to import the data into GNUcache later. The project is publicly available on GitHub. The main branch of the project is composed of 1,730 commits by 46 contributors. On May 13, 2012, the project repository is created with 83 Java classes, 85 data files and 243 binaries. The source code is mainly located in a package in the bottom right part of the city, nicely divided into sub-packages. There are three districts of images and several districts of data files. Separately, the module in the top left part of the city has one Java class, four data files and some binaries. Few commits later, the database is introduced. This event is reflected in the commit message. With time, new buildings appear. The size of the entity changes. Three years and 500 comets later, the city looks different. The project is going through major refactorings, which also include the database. At this moment, the entities are moved to a new location. Some table accesses have disappeared, and soon new ones are added. The database disappears for one comet, it then reappears with a new table and access, which are soon removed. This revision has three tables, which are accessed by a few classes. We can see splits, transactions and accounts. Each table in the cloud has a building in the city, named adapter, created to interact with it. There is also database helper, which accesses all the tables. Toward the end of the evolution, the classes are located in the same position and new entities have appeared. The system has grown considerably, with some classes reaching considerable size in terms of variables and methods. The tables are noticeably bigger due to the addition of new columns. The communication between the software system and the database is well organized. Only a few classes located in the same package are accessing the tables. There are many districts with one tall and thin data file, all of the same sizes. They are used to store words and sentences in the different languages supported by the application. The story of the repository ends in 2018 with few modifications in 2020. Our main goal is to visualize the evolution of software systems, their data, and their interaction using the city metaphor. The new analysis revealed interesting observation about the evolution of these systems. Metricity shows the software and data, which are the two main components of modern systems. This tool is available online. I am Susanna Nardigo, and this is Visualizing Evolving Software and Data Cities. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.